In this video, I'll be going over the solution to Secret Mission from Code Chef February Lunchtime 2020. So you're given a weighted graph and a sequence B. Now you have to find the minimum length of a sequence A. And then the sequence A should satisfy the following property. So for example, if sequence A looks like this, then we should visit the cities in A in this order, and then we should use the we should go along the shortest one of the shortest paths between each uh, pair between each adjacent pair of cities. So, for example, from one to three, we can go along one two three or one four three, and then the the cities that we visit while going through the cities in A, they should be exactly the sequence B. So for example, we can if we start from city one over here, and the cities that we have visited are shown here, and at first it's just one. And then when we go to city three, we can go along the shortest path from two and um, from two to three. So then we visit two and three, and then we need to go to city one. And we can go through the cities four and then one. And then we do the same thing for the last two nodes. So from one to three, we go through city two, and then from three to one, we go through city four. And then the final list of visited cities we have here should be equal to the sequence B that we're given. And this sequence of the sequence A has a length of five. And in fact, it's impossible to get a length below five. So the answer for this test case is five. The first thing we need is to calculate the shortest path between all nodes in the graph, since it will allow us to check if a sequence A works. There are many ways to do this. For example, you can use uh, Dijkstra or you can use Floyd Warshaw as I did in my code. And if you're not familiar with it, I included a link explaining Floyd Warshaw in the description of this video. The next thing we should try to do is to find the sequence A. And one solution which will come to mind is a greedy algorithm. We will build A one by one, and we will try to make sure that adjacent cities in A, so A of I and A of I plus one, have the maximum distance from each other as possible. This is because the more distance we have between adjacent nodes in A, the less nodes we need to cover everything in the sequence B. This greedy solution is kind of intuitive, but uh, I'll prove it at the end of this video. So for example here, we start at city 1, so uh, the first element of our A must be 1. And then let's look at 2. <clears throat> so the shortest path from 1 to 2, it goes through these two nodes. So the next element can be 2. And then the f if we choose the next element to be 3, the shortest path from 1 to 3, it could go through 1, 2, and 3. So this is also possible. And then the shortest path from 1 to 5 could go through um, 1, 2, 3, and 5. So this is also possible. But then the shortest path from 1 to 3, it should only have uh, 2, it should only have 3 nodes. So 1, 2, and 3. But then in B, there are five nodes. So this is not the shortest path from one to three. So this won't work. And the maximum, the most distance we can have is from this five over here. So our next element will be equal to five. Now we do the same thing again. So from five to three, we know that that's the shortest path. So three can work. From five to four, 
you know that the shortest path is 5, 3, 4. So this works. And from 5 to 1, one of the shortest paths is 5, 3, 4, 1. So 1 also works. And then from 5 to 2, the shortest path is actually 5, 3, 2. And so this is not the shortest path between from 5 to 2. So 2 won't work. And the maximum we can extend is up to this 1. So we put 1 over here. And then finally, we find that we, we try to extend again and one, the shortest path from 1 to 2 is 1 to 2, so this works. And the shortest path from 1 to 3, it goes from, it, it passes from 1, like one of the shortest paths from 1 to 3 goes through these three cities, so this also works. And since this is the end of the sequence, we'll just put 3 here. So we find that the answer for this test case should be 4. Now I will show my code. So in the first part, I basically input all of the data. And this matrix, this matrix D1 stores the weight of the edges. And if there's no edge, then it'll just be a very big value, which will basically simulate infinity. And then I compute the all pair sh shortest path with Fort Warshaw. And the shortest path between i and j will be stored in d2 of i of j. And then in the last part here, I build the sequence A. And I don't actually store the sequence in my code, but I just calculate the length of A. And the length of A is stored in the answer here. So basically, I start from the beginning of the array, and then in each iteration, I try to find the maximum j such that b of the path from b of i to b of j is the shortest. And then this loop here will try to extend j. It'll try to see if j plus 1 works. So first, we find the length of the sum of the length of the uh, path of the distances between adjacent cities from b of i to b of j plus 1. So we just have a for loop for this, which sums the adjacent distances. And then we check, we compare this with the shortest path from b of i to b of j plus 1. And if our sum of distances is greater, it means that the path from b of i to b of j plus 1 is not the shortest path. So j plus 1 doesn't work, and we need to break. And otherwise, we can increase j. And then, after we increase j, if we find that j is still equal to i, that means that we can't extend at all, so there's no solution. And we should just print out negative 1. So now I will go over why this greedy solution is correct. And we can prove this using with contradiction. Uh, Actually, you prove it with using exchange argument. So let's say our optimal solution, in our optimal solution, A looks like, consists of B of 1, B of I of 1, B of I of 2, and so on. And then our greedy solution consists of, for A, the sequence A consists of B of 1 and B of J, where the J is the index that our greedy solution selects. And since j, since the greedy solution always selects the maximum j, <coughs> we can make sure that <coughs> we know that if these two are different, then i of 1 is smaller than j. And then we can notice two things. So the path from b of 1 to b of j is a shortest path because it is included in the greedy solution. And then since the path from b of i of 1 to b of i of 2 is the shortest path, 
b of j to b of i of 2 will also be the shortest path since i of 1 is smaller than j. So this means that if we ch in the optimal solution, if we change i of 1 to j, then this sequence a will still be valid. So if we can do this for all, all of the elements of the sequence uh, of both solutions, and eventually we will find that the greedy solution is also an optimal solution. If this video was helpful, then feel free to like and subscribe.